It seems like you can't turn on the news these days without hearing something about stem cell science, touted as the next big thing in medicine. Could it also hold the key for male pattern boldness? Stay tuned to find out. Hey guys, Leon here from HairGod.com, where people who are worried about their hair loss go to regrow their hair. Welcome to the Hair God YouTube channel, where we create tons of science-backed videos all about combating hair loss and regrowing healthy hair. Now, if you do want updating on any of the latest hair loss news or any discoveries that we make, make sure to hit subscribe and smash the notifications button. And also guys, don't forget to click the link in the description to take the Hair God Hair Loss Quiz. You'll answer a few short and simple questions about yourself and your hair loss, then you'll receive free expert advice on how to regrow healthy hair. So now let's get into the video on stem cells. So unless you live completely cut off from the media, it's hard not to hear about stem cells. It seems like every time you turn on the TV or radio, there'll be some news story on the latest exciting stem cell research, religious controversies, protests, legislation, you name it. Now guys, setting the controversy aside, stem cell therapy is already being used for a number of conditions, most notably various blood cancers, and is being touted as possibly holding the key to other currently incurable conditions like diabetes, Parkinson's disease, and even blindness. Could stem cells also one day be used to treat male pattern boldness? Well, we'll be exploring this in today's video. But before anything else, let's see in very simple terms what stem cells are. So, after a sperm has fertilized an egg inside the uterus to produce the first cell of the future baby, this cell will then go on to divide into two cells. The two cells then divide into four cells and so on. And all these early embryonic cells are seemingly identical in appearance. After the first few divisions, when the embryo has reached a ball-like mass of around 150 to 200 identical looking cells, the individual cells lose the ability to create a new embryo. So if you were to extract one of these cells, you wouldn't be able to get another baby out of it, no matter how you treat the cell. These early cells do, however, retain the ability to develop into any cell in the human body. They are accordingly called embryonic stem cells. Theoretically, an embryonic stem cell can, if treated properly, reproduce and differentiate into any of the highly variable specialized cells in the body. It can become a kidney cell, a brain cell, a liver cell, you name it. The other class of stem cells are called adult stem cells. As the name suggests, these are undifferentiated cells found in a developed human body, located in particular tissue or organs where they reside. Adult stem cells can only develop into one of the cell types that belong to that particular organ. For example, adult stem cells that are in your brain have the potential to differentiate into any of the types of cells that you'll find in your brain, like neurons, astrocytes, etc. But an adult brain stem cell cannot, no matter how much we treat it, give rise to, for example, lung or skin cells. So why are they so important? Well, it is precisely this ability of stem cells to differentiate and generate all sorts of cells that we find in the human body that makes them so important for medical research. And very conveniently, under the right conditions, stem cells can keep on reproducing in their undifferentiated state for as long as scientists and doctors need them to. An example of just how versatile and useful stem cells are is in their use in a variety of blood cancers. Patients with various types of blood cancer are prescribed high doses of toxic chemotherapy to kill off the malignant blood cancer cells, but in the process their immune system is devastated as a side effect of the chemotherapy. So, blood stem cells from the bone marrow or bloodstream are transplanted into patients whose immune system is at the point of collapse. They regenerate themselves and the patient is essentially given a new immune system. Now, the stem cells can come from the patients themselves or they can actually come from another donor. So, the question is, can stem cells be used against male pattern baldness? Now, the adult stem cells for our hair follicles, both on the scalp and the rest of the body, are found in the region called the bulge, which is where the erector pili muscle meets the follicle. These stem cells provide the entire follicle with new cells, but they can also be called to action for the creation of new cells in the outer skin layer in the event of a wound. The idea of using these adult stem cells in the bulge of the hair follicle to generate new hair follicles for balding men has been floating around for quite some time. But it was only in 2017 that it passed from the realm of theory to that of history. That year, a team of Italian researchers reported the first cases of successful transplantation of human hair follicle stem cells in 11 patients with advanced androgenetic alopecia. 
These researchers used a punched biopsy to extract a small piece of scalp tissue from an area of each subject's head that had normal hair growth. Punch biopsy is when you pull out a sample of tissue using a very small rounded surgical instrument like a tiny circular cookie cutter. This issue was then spun into a centrifuge in order to separate the stem cells and this process created a cell suspension that was injected into the balding areas of the scalp. In these before and after images, you can see the baseline photo of one of the study subjects. On the left, the patient's head at the start of the study and to the right 23 weeks after the stem cell transplant. Across all 11 subjects, the hair density in the treated areas increased by an average of 29%. Now, this procedure is at this point considered experimental, and though it seems difficult to know when it will be refined and made widely commercially available, it could be within the next 5 to 10 years. But what is clear is that this kind of stem cell transplant, if it lives up to expectations, will render current state-of-the-art cosmetic hair procedures, like follicular unit extraction, obsolete and do so in a very short amount of time. The stem cell transplant will be simpler, faster and far less invasive, and rather than extracting entire follicles over a wide area of the scalp, the doctor will only be extracting invisible stem cells from a tiny scalp sample. Due to its simplicity, this procedure will be more or less painless, with fewer side effects and also cost far less than current hair transplant procedures. One big question mark regards the long-term outcomes. We know that a substantial percentage of transplanted hairs using today's methods will sooner or later fall out, but it is not yet clear what the long-term results of stem cell transplants will look like. Given the limited information currently available, a reasonable estimate is that hair obtained via stem cell transplant will have a lifespan of up to maybe five or six years. And as the technology improves, this figure will almost certainly go up. Now guys, this is a fascinating topic to which we will no doubt return to in the future. But that's all we have time for in today's video. I've included links to the Italian study as well as other resources in the description below. Guys, let us know what your thoughts are and if stem cell transplant is something that you would personally consider when the technology becomes widely available. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. This was Leon from HairGuard.com. Goodbye.